abusia fo ya memu nyina mo akwa baba ohene ba media so e wo facebook live and youtube ya ka kire wo say breaking news bi a e bebe bia no ohene ba media e na ya be nam so na ya dia bro na sesi ya de e are ho samu a abeto ya nim kire se e ye the former finance minister dr kwesi bochi opanyini watimi afrimu ya 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 onya mfinhia aduoson enwotwe Obi obu sa say Dr. Kosi Botwi on the hwan abusia for ya de ne ho aba kosem kakra be bro ene kwan ya nam so a odi free mu nyina no ya de ho ensem e be bro na Dr. Akosi Botwi e yo bi a Ghana ye kan ya manyosem a na se odi mu akotene pa na se wo ye ND cinema pa na se ojon amanyoku no achepa yi na oba be som Ghana se for to sam for the chair the finance minister e ye afi apem ahankono e de owotwi mienu 1982 eko pim afi a pim a han kono edu yokono enum 1995 nese o sevo e ye gana e mai infinsia ma kon ma kon edu miensa 13 years eno be ye finance minister she se ye kapadia na she se one ye the long servants eh, finance minister ewo gana ana fe africa ubi ye ni wa wetimi a sevo e bisada na entia abetu ya bubu wano chita se nansen na opinion in the entono and I said, Hold the donor cacra, and I'm so Emma yet the Nicotu, a year Koribu teaching hospital. You know, Emma Fufian to a car. Sabri, the elbow baby, a name to the say, opinion on etimia free. Ya, 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 she said, a day any bressem, a babato gun and a bushing in our so. Now, ye won on the third September, nineteen forty four. Let's say, Ubun Conta, with me and your infant, she be a duo son and what tree. Let's just say, eh, yadia, nyanko pon, etimi, eshi ya no pe ye. Na, eh, former eh, President Jerry John Rawlings, e eh, penso, na yadi o penjini, onono, enene, ene eshi eh, bompa, eh, si yabe kaya, na yise, Provisional National eh, Defense Council, eh, ye PNDC, eh, ye 1982, eh, kwa pimi 1991, na yadia, udimu wako tinepa, eh, buwa NDC, ama nyukonua, Obabe ye, e ye finance minister. Sabre no, ye si kasem yina. Ne chise, onona e kwa toto. O ye economist, a, e bibi e fe si kasem hondi ye. O ni mpe ye. E bu sunya fwo, doktor kwa si bo chwa ye kane honwa semu yin. O yu obia, o sunya di ya kwenye ni mpe ye. Ye chise, e nyasa yin ketua kura. Na, enti ya ye nyachire se, e ya di ya, e utimi kwa dnya na budini krata, e ye LLB from the University of Ghana. Ana fi, osa ye LLM, from Yale Law of School and Afi Oje ni doctorate degree ewo University of Michigan Law School. Na yenwe ti no osa eko Tanzania eko kusunya adie na osa kotre adie kakra enso ewo honom. Yenwe ti no eno ni mjume di anu odinti Dr. Kosi Bochi ebe ye the uh, advisor to the World Bank e ye Afi Apim Ahang Kono Edi Okono Enso 1997 as world development report na we did you might be brave and a abua gana man so and then you made the anu di enti obeye the chairman of imf group of independent experts and which he known so eh was out to us what they are un special initiative on africa and an advisor to european center for development policy management let's say where did you might be brave and a abua Ghana mine. Na yenu yine chino, samu beka ya, eh, afibia no, election ba be druwa, ubu mwa si yese Dr. Kusibu Tri, wa yini ti se ope, eh, ye the chairmanship position, ama NDC, no ababo, niti no se debi, edumrebi kwa mi yebe ka se, nanka, eh, ye presidential race, ya NDC, no muko yi, Franka tufono so, yini nana Kusibu Tri, yidini, ewo mwa chise, NDC ama nyoko no, unti mi, eh, yini infrim, neba Ghana so, isi ka sem, eh, nye futu semo ha, Eh, ya non so, wedi mwa kote nepa. Nansa ya gana, ye ko, e ye crisis mwa, chi se, yu ya sinye na anon, economic crisis mwa. Dr. Kosi bo chwe ba be kasa ye. Inti ya nko, ne mpe di mfuwa kanse ke treman mpuro no. Ye inti ye, ne last interview ye yeah, ya, yeah. ansana, o tuwa na nanom, e wo nsi ya do. Na ye ba, ye be tuwa so. I want us to leave here very clear on what I was saying. I said, we are in a crisis. Clearly. Two, if we don't resolve the crisis, it will lead to a catastrophe. 
which we need to avoid as a nation. And to avoid a catastrophe, we need to do a, num a number of things, including where we're creating political space for some real conversation about the way forward. I'm fully aware that the nation is terribly polarized. And therefore, even building or creating that political space is not going to be easy. But the point is that if we don't, and the polarization continues, there's no talking really across political lines. Then the crisis is going to deepen. The government can't, where we are now, we are in a situation where you can't service the debt and at the same time meet social and other obligations so, oh, that are being programmed in a budget. Even salaries are, are, are getting threatened. Payments to leap, getting to IRS and so on. We are perilously close to a catastrophe already. As a patriot, I said I'm one. I'm saying that we have a responsibility to step back from the brink. Now, whether we can do it or not depends on a recognition on the policymakers at least recognizing that there's a problem. If we don't recognize it, I'm saying, let's not press the panic button. But it is worse to sit back and smile and be cool and calm when the fire is burning. I said that. If it, then you might as well press the panic button. <laughs> OK. So that's where we are. I'll talk about where we are today and what we need to pull back from the precipice, and what will happen if we don't. Okay. So, yes, the corruption, for me, you know, if we were to give a talk on the corruption, it would take another day, actually. It starts from our political system, our political parties, which largely have become electioneering machines, and which increasingly People invest in, in the hope that on the morrow of the victory, they will get their returns. Clear. When it comes to that, even the angels will be singing, oh, when the crunch is down, I want to be in the number. <laughs> oh, Lord. When it comes to that, even if I want to be in the number. Sorry, um, you know. And that is the problem. It comes, it is inherent in the political system we have, which creates conditions. People invest in these things, and when the, more, the, the victory comes, you see a scramble for particular positions in this country. GNPC, Cocoa Board, uh, Revenue Authority, uh, TOR. I mean, you know, and the tragedy is that we are beginning to accept all these things as normal. It's part of our daily lives. So some of us take a transactional view where, let me survive. I mean, you know, they are here for four years, so uh, let, let's cool it. OK. Now, so I was talking indirectly about the source of the corruption. And saying on the e levy, first of all, I mean, we were, there was the beginning of a physical problem before the COVID. First, it is idle to pretend that we can address our economic difficulties without some hardship. In the short term, no one can, no one. There is simply no silver bullets or magical solution somewhere that can bring lasting relief without some level of pain and sacrifice. 
The real question is how we distribute this hardship in an equitable and transparent manner. So, for example, it is egregiously inequitable to have grants for about 1.5 million beneficiaries of the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty League program unpaid for months. because we are in a crisis. That is not where the hardship should hit. It is the last place that the hardship should hit. Second, the problem with our public finances is structural and would require a thorough review of all rigidities, the rigidities and sources of pressure in the budget, including every flagship program and its sustainability and its impact. All the options must be on the table. The situation we find ourselves in calls for no less. It is important to realize that the problem is as much about raising more tax revenue as it is, perhaps even more importantly, about streamlining our public expenditure. We must not, for instance, transition temporary spending incurred during the pandemic into permanent public spending when we are already struggling to collect revenues. This will be a major policy blunder. Thirdly, we must resist the lure of solutions that would further mortgage the future of the young generations to come, such as collateralizing public revenue streams. As Bundland as the Bundland Commission said years ago, sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Above all, we must resist well solutions we must resist solutions that will delay hard decisions till, say, 2024, such as issuing zero coupon bonds ready to mature in 2025. It is something we must resist. These are not real solutions. So, for example, whoever takes the reins of government in 2025 will have to sell Shell a whopping 1.5 billion in Eurobond principal payments within months of assuming office. Whoever wins the reins of power in 2025 will have to find a whopping 1.5 billion to service zero bond principal payments just within months of taking office. So now, if we don't rebuild, there's nothing political about that. That's just a fact. 